Well, hello on this Friday, and hope everybody's doing well, and I hope everybody has a wonderful, safe, and blessed weekend. Me, I'm looking uh, like I just woke up, and I didn't, <laughs> but I had some spaghetti last night, and I tried a different sauce. Um, I usually get Prego when I add sausage to it, but... Uh, I got the traditional, and I usually have the mushroom, and it bothers... I have food allergies, right? Y'all hear me kind of coughing, and my nose is running. I have environmental allergies, and, and obviously I have been afflicted with some food allergies. <laughs> Lucky me! Lucky me! So, I don't know if y'all can tell, but I'm a little swollen right here. And this is the kind of stuff that some of the food does to me. I don't know um, what kind of food. Other people have food allergies, and it affects them in different ways. Uh, sometimes I'll get this rash around the edge of my forehead, and then it'll scratch and kind of flake. Yeah, it's disgusting. Um like, I cannot eat eggs. My eyes would have been really swollen if I had anything um, with a lot of eggs in it or something uh, to that effect. So I avoid stuff with eggs in it. But I guess I get a little closer. It's, oh, it's inside. It's, see how your, fr this is called fructose. And you know how some people have them? Um, you'll see some people and they're, and they're swollen. I mean, I. I've looked I've looked it up because I woke up one morning about a year ago and this is how I found out. And it's like, oh, what is this? Why is this the both of them were like boom? I had eaten um something with eggs in it. And uh so I started looking and researching what is this on your face? And it's called something like fructose. I know it sounds funny. Uh foot toast. Foot toast? Anyway, you can Google it. Um, and it says it doesn't, they don't really know what causes it uh, to a certain extent. But for me, I know what caused mine to swell up. It was uh, for me eating stuff I'm not supposed to eat. But this morning I woke up and I was swollen, so I'm not going to be able to have that, that sauce. Now, generally tomatoes do bother me. They're really high in histamine. Things that are high, I can't eat any canned foods whatsoever. But anyway, enough about that. Um, but it might be interesting to some of you guys if y'all have food allergies too, you know? I mean, all this bio crap they put in the food, I don't know what's going on, or it's just me and my genetics. Um, I mean, I think I've always had it and didn't know it. Like, my nose always ran, uh, even when I was a teenager up, um... Just I just runny nose. I just thought it was just allergies. But when I try to stick to things I'm supposed to eat and not supposed to eat, my nose doesn't run as much. And my ears used to drain, too. And that stopped once I started cutting all this stuff out of my diet. Like, I can't, no nuts, no dairy. Uh, if you guys got a Trader Joe's near you, I found a few things at Trader Joe's I can have. Like they've got some potato chips that are just the two ingredients are sea salt and potatoes. That's it. Do I get tired of them? Yeah. Am I thankful I can eat them? Yeah. <laughs> but, and I found a popcorn. They had a an organic popcorn. Now I can't eat the herbs and spice one. I tried it. And no. And everything has sunflower seed oil in it. Everything. Almost everything. And I have to really look and read. Like I said, I found the potato chips at Trader Joe's that didn't have all that crap in it. But all of this stuff has has these things in it. So no nuts for me. And I love pistachio. So boohoo. But anyway, I'm going to react. And I haven't seen this yet. Um, it's 28 minutes. It's just Trump. I didn't, I found, uh, this one from a news station. I think they're affiliated with ABC, a local ABC station somewhere. I'm not sure where they are, but anyway, 
Uh, so just reacting to Trump talking. I heard on the radio this morning that he had called out Schumer, and I'm like, ooh, I want to hear that. I want to hear him say, Chuck you, Schumer. Y'all, y'all rush babies out there remember uh, Rush used to say that when he started talking about Schumer. He'd go, Chuck you, Schumer. <laughs> it was hilarious anyway. Um, before we get started, I'm going to make a few comments about uh, all you Christians out there or all you people on the fence. I mean, even the Bible says you you can't be lukewarm. He'd rather have, God rather have you hot or cold. You can't be lukewarm. And I think uh, conservatives, Republicans have lost their way for a long time. Where <clears throat> we need to get back to vote on your moral convictions. What are your morals? What candidate best fits your morals? Now, Trump's not going to fit all your morals. Absolutely not. He's more like a, what? A Democrat from back in the day, moderate. But he's better than Kamala. He's going he's gonna to protect the border. He's a wrecking ball. He is going to mix things up. He's transforming. But look. No man's perfect. But if we continue to just sit, Christians, sit on the sidelines, and, and, and shame on you, if you're sitting on the couch and you don't go vote, you, and I'm going to say it, and yeah, I'm a Christian, but hey, I am a very flawed person. So yeah, I'm going to throw out some colorful metaphors to get my point across because guess what? God uses us all, whether we're sinners or not. Whether you want to believe that or not, God uses us for his benefit. He used Saul. Saul was bad, and then he became Paul. Okay, so look, all you people sitting on the couch on election day and you claim to be a Christian, and you don't go vote, shame on you, and then you have no bitching rights when the country's in a handbag. You have no bitching rights that you let Tampon Tim in the White House, where he's putting tampons in the boys' bathrooms in his state? Or they allow abortion in the, in the, in the latter months? They spew so much propaganda. So... You have no excuse. Don't tell me, well, I don't like either either one, and neither one of them, and, and, the, and the jig's up. So, oh, oh, the election's already, you know, in a fix. No, it's not. I always thought that, too, but I still went to vote. I always felt like, you know, because young people do think these things, and I thought these things, too, that there's a... Uh, probably a like this committee. I'm going to say committee. <laughs> <clears throat> we'll call it the powers that be on the earth, which is men who rule all these different countries and pull. And they're the they're the puppet masters that control the 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 world's oil and all this stuff. You know, kind of conspiracy theory, which could be true. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, but look. Policies are important. You can go and research what are the policies Kamala Harris has. What are the policies that uh, Trump has? Look, it does. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, and I always say it. But I know Kamala Harris is the is so far left. I think she's even more left. She probably is not more left than Obama. They're the same. But her campaigning, what she has said in the past, it makes her far left in the public eye. Because a lot of the left-wing libtards, they would always, they're so open now on, on their agenda. 
It's like in your face. They don't care. They don't care. They, they're telling you what they want. Kamala, I just did a video yesterday of Kamala Harris talking to some transgender guy dressed as a woman talking about taxpayer money funding criminals getting a, a, a gender reassignment surgery. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. And she tried to claim in the interview with um, Brett Baer, oh, well, well, Trump was going to blah, 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 too. And then Brett Baer goes, no, he, he never came out and said he would support any of that policy, which I've never heard of such either. He certainly, because Trump does want the Christian vote, He's, he's not going to do that. And it's never been in his policies to do anything like that. He has never come across as a left-wing libtard. And here I am. I, I, I'm going to have to cough a little bit. I'm going to mute this. Yeah, the, the stuff affects me in all different kinds of ways. Drink more water, drink more water, drink more water. The thing is, is that, look, you can't sit on the sideline. You can't sit and ride the fence and try to figure out who the hell you want to vote for. You should already know. And look, I'm guilty of not voting for local elections. All of these elections matter. And I need to make a better effort at when our local politicians in my area are, are coming up for election, I need to go vote. Look, the stats on people not voting in their local principalities is staggering. It is so low. And look, a lot of policies start from the ground up. That we elect these officials, we elect our school board, we elect the, the chief of police, our attorney generals, judges. These are important for our area. And I'll tell you what, the liberals, they have masterfully, masterfully infiltrated us. They are the enemy within. I stand by what I say. They want to transform America. You Christians out there, you watch the news. Do you not see what's going on or hear what's going on? Are you not involved in your children's school and what they're being taught and what they're not being taught? This woke agenda in our face? Do you do you want that? That that is not moral Christian values. The Bible is clear. There is no gray area. And you need to get it together. You need to get it together. You need to figure this out. Cause look, four four years with Kamala, it could be eight. Good Lord. They in Obama got elected for a second term, for Pete's sake. I was shocked when he got elected. And I think I think it was a lot because Christians sat by the wayside. And we're in big trouble. Not just in the country, but with God. Not with just the country, but with God. We have to pay attention. It is our duty to pay attention. We get to vote. And all you Christians sitting out there, good Lord, millions not voting. What is wrong with you? You cannot, I'm going to say it again, you you have no bitching rights about the country going to hell in a handbag because you didn't get off your ass. You didn't do your civic duty. 
and you didn't honor your moral convictions. Now, I'm not saying Trump is a, is a righteous moral man because nobody's above sinful. Nobody's perfect. But you need to weigh the scale. Which candidate has more of a moral viewpoint than the other? And then you decide. I thought about it this morning coming home after uh, taking uh, my boy to the school. And I listened to Christian radio in the morning. And they had this man um, on. And they were pretty much talking about this. And it got me thinking. And I pray about it. I'm like, Lord, use me. I'm not perfect. I don't know how to be. I don't know how to speak. I don't. I didn't go to college. I'm not a a super educated person. What can I do? How can how can God use me? I don't know. Maybe he is, maybe he ain't. I I don't know. See, I said ain't. I have poor English. Poor verbal skills. I don't know how to speak correctly. Not like these smooth, smooth talking spe- speakers. I'm just talking of how I'm feeling about it. I've been upset about this woke agenda. Why do I need to have a conversation with with a a child about something he heard about this woke crap? It infuriates me. Or your kid comes home. And says, oh, yeah, they have some kind of gay meeting in, in, in the mornings at school. And your head just goes, what? Am I in the twilight zone? Am I in the twilight zone? Why would any parent want another adult talking to their under 15 child? I don't, I don't even care if they're 15. Any any adolescent about any of this? What are they trying to ruin their innocence? These are children, and they need to be children. It is our duty to protect their eyes and ears as best as we can. My kid doesn't have a phone, and he's fourteen. He's probably the only kid at his school who's fourteen who's 14 and doesn't have a phone. I'm not ready to cross that bridge yet because he... (laughs) Do y'all remember when you were 14, 15, 16? The days seemed like they would never end. The summers seemed like they would never end. The youth is wasted on the youth. (laughs) Y'all remember my cousin Vinny? Because we're dumb. It's hard. It, it's hard for young people to re- to regulate because they act upon feeling and emotion, and they're powerful. And social media, there's stats out that say kids who spend so many hours on social media and on their f- stupid phone have higher risk of depression. It's true. I'm not making this up. Now, we've talked about getting him um, something that he'll just only, with it says parental control, that he can only text family members and only call family members. That's it. Who the heck else does he need to call? Now, back in my day, we had the phone that was mounted on the wall even before the The walkabouts, I used to call it the walkabout, y'all old folk remember when you got the phone, and boy, you could just take it anywhere in the house. You could go sit out on the front porch and talk on the phone. But, hey, your parents, you know, know you're on the phone, and then they'd say, hey, you've been on there long enough, hang it up. Or I'm expecting a call. Call waiting hadn't come out yet. (laughs) 
or there'd be a beep in, and then you'd know somebody was calling you. Now, all that started coming, you know, later. So I am telling my age. So this is my monologue is running a bit long. But anyway, Christians out there, get out and vote and stop it. Go pray about it. It is your duty. It is our duty. It, all the problems that's happening, it's because we we haven't been voting. Christians, I'm saying we as, as a whole, as Christians, I mean, I, I vote on uh, the major elections. I am guilty of not voting on my local elections. I will be full disclosure. And I need to do a better job. I need to be getting out there and voting, finding out about the candidates in my local districts. Because it is important for your area, especially for the school districts, people. Why do you think they, they I, I'm thinking that's why it's such a, a, a disaster. These school boards allowing this stuff, allowing pornographic type of literature in in the school library, but they frown upon if, if there's a Bible. It's 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 the Twilight Zone. Get off your butt and make sure you go vote. Go do some research. Fine, and you have to look which one has more of your values than the other one. And we know. What did the DNC have? What did they have outside their their uh, DNC convention? They had a Planned Parenthood bus giving abortions. And I think it was like 28, 27 babies were aborted during that week. Just think about that. Who has the most morals? Remember people used to wear those little things, what would Jesus do? Here we go. No, I haven't seen this yet. Thank you, everybody. Well, thank you very much. It's an honor. And they told me... Uh, under no circumstances are you allowed to use a teleprompter. And I got up here and oh. I see this is beautiful teleprompter. <laughs> so here I am. But uh, it is a tremendous thing. It's a tremendous dinner. I've come here with my father. So it was three times, but it was also many times before that, a long time ago. And it's a very special dinner. And you've done a fantastic job, Cardinal. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So I'd like to thank Your Eminence very much and your members of the clergy, so many people I know. All right, there's a fuzzy noise going on, and I don't know what that is. I don't know what's going on with that. Speaker of the House Johnson, what a job you're doing. He's done a great job. Senator Schumer, good. Yeah, I supported him. I was, oh, I don't know. I, I don't know. He used to say that's true, and now I'm not sure he would. But I, I gave him his first check from an office in Beach Haven. And uh, I was very proud of it. I don't know about it lately. <laughs> now I was, I was. It was his first check. He was running, and I said, he's a good man. Uh, Senator Gillibrand, thank you very much. Thank you very much for working hard. Governor Hochul, wherever you may be up, this is a big day, is right? Where is the governor? Good job. It's not an easy one, is it? But you're doing all right. We have to get a little money from the federal government, I have to tell you. It's about, it's about time. It's about time. Mayor Adams, good luck with everything. They went after you. <laughs> they went after you, Mayor. Yeah, oh, boy, I do that. Nine and a half months ago, I said, you know, he just said something about it, about the administration. He's going to be indicted any moment. <laughs> and guess what happened? But you're going to win. I think you're going to win. I know you're going to win. So good luck. Good luck. I don't like what they do. Yeah, look at Chuck Schumer. He looks like 
what what is he the penguin he's all like this and he's like the uh <laughs> what is he an evil villain not two face but look oh my god sorry <laughs> it's just i mean i just got to looking at him and i'm like what is going on here <laughs> whatever i know i have one eye seems to be bigger than the other but look Maybe maybe I'm gonna look like that when I'm get when I get old. I don't know. <laughs> Damn, blame. I don't like what they do, and also just think we've got so many friends up here. It's uh, great. Not a great friend. Some uh, some of my best friends. And you are right. They are distinguished and they are wealthy for the most part. A couple are having a hard time, but. All right, I found another another one I had to go because the other one was just making noise, and hopefully I got it in the same spot, but we'll, we'll see. I, I don't know. Mayor Adams, good luck with everything. They went after you. <laughs> they went after you, Mayor. Yeah, oh boy, I do that. Nine and a half yeah. months ago, I said, you know, he just said something about it. Yeah, we heard this, but it's okay. He's going to be indicted any moment. And guess what happened? But you're going to win. I think you're going to win. I know you're going to win. So good luck. Good luck. I don't like what they do. I don't like what they do. And also, just think we've got so many friends up here. It's uh, great. I'm not a great friend. Some, uh, some of my best friends. And you Guys, this one's doing it too. Every one of them. I, I did uh, Sky. Oh, I didn't do. I didn't switch over to Sky News, but I switched over to a couple of uh, two other ones, and I think it's just in there. So, I apologize. I can't fix it. And this is uh, Forbes. You are right. They are distinguished and they are wealthy for the most part. A couple are having a hard time, but they're going to get over it. I also want to thank my very beautiful wife, and thank you for mentioning, but can you believe this? She did a book, and it's a really good book, and she worked hard on it, and it just became number one on the New York Times list, so I think that's okay. I don't even know what book that is. That's not an easy thing to do, especially when your name is Trump and you're on the New York Times list. I, that thing, that must be selling like hotcakes, but thank you for mentioning. I appreciate it. New York good Times job, is probably did. hating it. It's a true pleasure to be with you this evening. Amazing pleasure. And uh, these days, it's uh, really a pleasure anywhere in New York without a subpoena for my appearance. <laughs> Anytime I don't get a subpoena, I'm very happy. <laughs> they've gone after me, Mr. Mayor. Your peanuts compared to what they've done to me. <laughs> and you're going to be okay. But I have to be careful, however, to understand that this will be the first time in the history of this event where jokes will be fact-checked, and they will be, <laughs> and they will be. It's been a long tradition for both Democrat and Republican candidates for President of the United States to attend this dinner. And always it's a rule. You got to go to the dinner. You got to do it. Otherwise, uh, bad things are going to happen to you from up there. I was <laughs> You can't do what I just saw on that screen, but uh, my opponent feels like she does not have to be here, which is deeply disrespectful to the event and, in particular, to our great Catholic community. Very disrespectful. Sch Schumer's not clapping. The last Democrat not to attend this important event was Walter Mondale, and it did not go very well for him. Oh. He lost 49 states, and he won one, oh. Minnesota. <laughs> so I said, there's no way I'm missing it. Actually, it was not easy for me to get here tonight. Gordon, I wasn't going to miss this thing. You know, matter, I didn't care. I wasn't going to miss it. But that's true. Walter Mondale, 49 and 1. He was expected to do well, and it didn't work out. It shows you there is a God. I mean, for those people that are questioning it. I understand the real reason that she's not here is she's hunting with her running mate, spending a lot of time hunting. In any event, it's a weird, 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 weird. You know the word weird. No. They call me weird. They call JD weird. We're very solid people. 
this guy is calling us weird, but this was weird that the Democrat candidate is not here and with us tonight. I want to also congratulate somebody who's going to make us all healthy. RFK Jr., we love you. I don't see him. He's campaigning all over the place. He's campaigning. He was, you're all over. How, hello, you both. Nice to see you both. You're doing a good job. He's a great guy, too. He really is. He's going to make us a healthier place. We're going to let him go wild for a little while. Then I'm going to have to maybe rein him back. Because <laughs> he's got some pretty wild ideas, but most of them are really good, I think. <laughs> He's a, he's a good man, and he believes, he believes the environment, the healthy people. He wants healthy people. He wants healthy food. And he's going to do it. He's going to have a big chance to do it, because we do need that. I would not have missed the Al Smith dinner for anything in the world. I still remember coming here as a very young guy with my father, Fred. He was a great guy, my father. He was a, he was a tough cookie, but he had a very big heart. He was, any time we'd walk down the street, and you don't see it too much anymore, there'd be people standing with tin cans, tin cans, and he would always take out $100 and put it in that can. And I always thought it was beautiful. And frankly, I even think more so now it was beautiful, because nowadays you don't see it so much. But I've he, heard I him tell him, the story he before. He used to come here very religiously. And uh, a great New York tradition has been born 79 years ago. It was born 79 years ago. And there are some people that were here for almost that length. I know many of them, and it's not a pretty picture. It's not a pretty picture. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm glad he's going to get JFK, because JFK guy, he is super into, into health. I mean, look, my face is swollen from food. This is insane. What is this food doing to us? I mean, just I just wanted to throw that in there because, you know, it's I have to live with this. And, yeah, I would be interested to know if they could stop all the uh, the bio crap that they're putting in our food. Two candidates for president are supposed to exchange good natured barbs. And, you know, we get along very well. I didn't like Biden very much. And now I like him quite a bit. You know, it's. <laughs> And now I say that she's much worse than him. He was a much better candidate than her, actually. And when we hopefully win, dispose of her, I like her a lot. But right now, I can't stand her. <laughs> I can't stand her. I've never liked people that I was competing against. When you do, uh, a lot of bad things happen. And we are doing well, by the way. The votes are starting to come in. You got to get out and vote. And Catholics, you got to vote for me. <laughs> Just remember. You better remember I'm here, and she's not. I could have done that, too. <laughs> but you do something that's incredible, the Catholic Church, you're helping the poor, educating children, and supporting the vulnerable. But if you really wanted Vice President Harris to accept your invitation, I guess you should have told her the funds were going to bail out the looters and rioters in Minneapolis, and she would have been here guaranteed oh. she would have been here. Oh, burn. Burn. She would have been okay. She would have been okay burn. with that. But I know this isn't my normal crowd tonight because it just isn't. It's not my normal crowd. Believe me, my normal crowd is younger, <laughs> has a lot more energy. <laughs> but you have certain advantages too, like cash, lots of cash. But many of you are Manhattan liberals from the media and the Democrat Party. Oh. I always say the Democrat. You know, Chuck doesn't like that. He likes Democratic. And it sounds much more beautiful. The Democratic Party. I always say the Democrat Party because it sounds worse. <laughs> it is true. He likes Democratic. Why don't they just change the name? This way, we're, you know, they, it is Democrat. But uh, I must say I was shocked when I heard that Kamala was Skipping the Al Smith dinner, I'd really hope that she would come because we can't get enough of hearing her beautiful laugh. She laughs like crazy. Oh. We would recognize oh. it any place in this room, and all polls are indicating I'm leading big with the Catholic vote, as I should be, as I should be. <laughs> but I don't think Kamala has given up yet. She hasn't, instead of attending tonight. She's in Michigan receiving communion from Gretchen Whitmer. Oh. 
That's not a pretty sight. But Catholics, please don't be too insulted by Kamala's absence. If the Democrats, <laughs> yeah, he says, thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> if Democrats really wanted to have someone not be with us this evening, they would have just sent Joe Biden. <laughs> you know, he's having second thoughts. You know that, right? He's having, he wants to come back. If she does any worse in the polls, they're going to bring him back again, I think. <laughs> Chuck, he's going to do it. He's the one that got him out. Oh, That's the guy. Much more so than oh. Crazy Nancy, I will tell you. Oh. Because I know him. He did it. <laughs> Joe has almost disappeared from view. The only way he could be seen less is if he had a show on CNN. They have nothing. <laughs> They've got nothing. Fake news, right? Fake. That term wasn't good. You know, they say the term is no longer in vogue because it's much worse than fake. I don't want to tell you what the real name is. I won't do it because oh. all those cameras would shut off immediately. They don't like that. But apparently Joe didn't think it was fair for me to have the podium to myself with Kamala skipping the event. So he called, looked at me and said, don't. <laughs> Does anybody understand that? Yes. Yeah, that was. I thought it was actually very good until just now. <laughs> it was announced this morning that at a funeral yesterday, in a rare moment of clarity, Joe told Barack Hussein Obama that, quote, <laughs> only a few people got that. <laughs> or as Rush Limbaugh used to say, Barack Hussein Obama. Remember that? <laughs> he did. He I remember that. was a piece of that. work. We miss him. Yes, yes. But as he told Barack Hussein Obama, quote, she's not as strong as me. She's not as strong. Do you understand that? And Obama agreed, saying, that's true. Other than that, I think the Democrats are getting along quite well. Right? They get, nobody got that one. The fact is, we need new leadership in this country. Right now, we have someone in the White House who can barely talk, barely put together two coherent sentences who seems to have mental faculties of a child, it's said. There's a person that has nothing going, no intelligence whatsoever, but enough about Kamala Harris. Let's get on to something. <laughs> Come on. That was funny. That was the funniest thing he said. I forgot about Rush Limbaugh calling Obama oh, Barack Hussein Obama. He called him that all the time. <laughs> I did remember he called uh, Rush Limbaugh would say Chuck Hugh Schumer. But anyway, that was funny because I so thought he was talking about Biden. That was great. I know Kamala's word because she spends a lot of time complaining. I won't agree to another debate. But the truth is, I've debated twice this year, once against Joe Biden and once against David Muir of ABC. Oh. That was amazing, 11 times. None for the other side. Do you think that's fair news? I don't think so. That's fake news. I don't know what's going to happen three weeks from now. It's going to be uh, very interesting. It just started. It's actually, uh, it's actually, isn't it sort of exciting? Right? It really, isn't it just exciting what's going on? It's a process. It's a rough process, too. Not so pretty, and yet sometimes very beautiful. But the press is reporting that Democrats are starting to panic. They're panicking. They are panicking because, you know, the votes that are coming in are coming in very, very strong. Like a Schumer. Way. I won't tell you what way that is, but Chuck Schumer is here looking very glum. Does he look glum? He looks glum. <laughs> looks like an evil villain. But look on the bright side, Chuck, considering how woke your party has become. If Kamala loses, you still have a chance to become the first woman president. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I that was good. Said, do you mind if I do that? He said, no, you got to do what you got to do. He's a pro. He's a professor. <laughs> no, it's He's a good man, actually. I hate to say it. <laughs> Don't ever use it against me, please. I'll say, this dinner was really setting me back when I said that. But I've known him a long time. 
There's a group called White Dudes for Harris. Have you seen this? White Dudes for Harris. Anybody know? Are some of you here? White Dudes for Harris. Doesn't sound like it. But I'm not worried about them at all because their wives and their wives' lovers are all voting for me. <laughs> okay. That was funny. <laughs> This is awesome. This is a good roast. I, I like a good roast. Here we go. <laughs> their wives and their wives. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Every one of those people is running. <laughs> and as you may have seen, Kamala did an interview on Fox News yesterday. It went so poorly for her that the Democrats have been forced to install another 100 drop boxes throughout the city. <laughs> and the upside really is Kamala now sees the benefit of deportation. She wants to deport people. She's vicious. She wants to deport people. And she wants to start by deporting Brett Baer of Fox. <laughs> it's an interesting interview last night. Huh? A major issue in this race is child care. And Kamala has put forward a concept of a plan a lot of people don't like it. The only piece of advice I would have for her in the event that she wins would be not to let her husband, Doug, anywhere near the nannies. Just keep him away. Oh! That's a nasty one. That's nasty. Oh, that was... I told these idiots that gave me this stuff, that's too tough. Oh, man. Burn. Oh, I did, I did, you know, they told Burn. me the last time I did this, uh, I was running against Crooked Hillary. And... <laughs> I mean, Hillary. <laughs> no, I was running against Cook and Hillary, and I did it. And I thought it was a roast. So I was told it's a roast. And I had the meanest guy you've ever seen write stuff up. And man, was the room angry. Even the Cardinal remembers. I went overboard. Don't you agree, Cardinal? It was, like, terrible. And I knew I was in trouble around midway through because, you know, people are not... Even my own side was angry at me. They were saying, it's too much. But uh, I did it anyway. I didn't give it. <laughs> <laughs> Campaigning can take a toll on a family and family life, although I hear that Kamala and her husband carve out some really beautiful alone time at the end of the day for an intimate dinner. Just Doug, her, and the teleprompter that she uses quite well. <laughs> and by the way, she wouldn't have liked this tonight if she was told about no teleprompter. I can't believe I saw a teleprompter. They said they've never had a teleprompter in the history of this dinner. I told that to the Cardinal, right? And then a teleprompter pops up for, he must be a very important comedian to get that. <laughs> they give you one, but not me. How about that one, huh? Come here. Yeah, and you did a good job. Tradition holds that I'm supposed to tell a few self-deprecating jokes this evening. So here it goes. <laughs> nope. I've got nothing. <laughs> I've got nothing. There's nothing to say. I guess oh. I just don't see the point of taking shots at myself when other people have been Ooh. shooting at me for a hell of a long time and they shoot. Me. You know, Literally. they say about presidents, they say that Andrew Jackson was the president that was the most meanly treated. His wife died, she died of heartache. She was heartbroken at the way they treated him. And they say that second was Abraham Lincoln, but he was in charge of a civil war, you know. So. But those were the two, Andrew Jackson, up until me. Now they say it's not even close. There's never been a president that's been treated so badly as me, and our people aren't happy about it. But I was treated a little bit rough. But I don't mind it somehow, and I think it's uh, just part of the game. I'd like to thank our MC this evening, Jim Gaffigan. Most recently, Jim has been playing Tim Waltz on Saturday Night Live. And that'll be a very short gig, I hope, Jim. <laughs> but it was fun while it lasted, wasn't it? Oh. Let's oh. see how that lasts. <laughs> it better be quick. We don't want him, and we don't, I'm not going to say it anymore. But unfortunately, Governor Waltz isn't here himself, but don't worry, he'll... Say that he was, he's going to say he was. <laughs> I used to think the Democrats oh were God. crazy for saying that men have periods. 
But then I met Tim Waltz. <laughs> the stupid show, The View, is so bad now that the other day I was watching it and thinking to myself, you know what? They really need to bring Rosie O'Donnell back. <laughs> that show is bad. Those people are bad. I know every one of them, and they are bad news, I want to tell you. And it doesn't do very well either. I always like to say, you know, ratings are very important. When they don't do well, it doesn't do very well. As I look around the dais, I see all of the usual suspects. For instance, Mayor Adams. I'd like to poke some fun at Eric, but I'm going to be nice. I just want to be nice because I know what it's like to be persecuted by the DOJ for speaking out against open borders. We were persecuted, Eric. I was persecuted, and so are you, Eric. The mayor's dietary restrictions are well known, but I've got to say I've never met a person who's a vegan who liked turkey so much. <laughs> There's something about him with turkey. I just found that out today, and you know, I haven't been in New York that much. <laughs> I don't let it, but you're going to win, Eric. We have another former New York City mayor with us, frankly, easily the worst in our history. Ouch. And it's not Michael that I can tell you. Ouch. I'm surprised that Bill de Blasio was actually able to make it tonight, to be honest. He was a terrible mayor. I don't give a shit if this is comedy or not. He was a terrible mayor. He did a horrible, he did a horrible oh, job. Oh, man. That's not comedy, by the way. That's fact. Oh. But unlike the rest of New York, at least Bill doesn't have to worry about the criminals. They owe him big. He let them get away with a lot of stuff. Well, I'd better wrap up because Mayor Adams told me earlier that I needed to make this one very quick, especially the city has reserved this room for a large group of illegal aliens coming in from Texas. Oh, That's right, they've reserved many rooms Many Epic. rooms, a lot of rooms, too many rooms. Oh, my God. But in all seriousness, it's an honor to be here to support the city and the community. It's a great community that I love. I've been here a long time, and I love it. And then it's going to make a big comeback, and I'm going to help it make a comeback. I'm going to win, and I'm going to make a comeback. We're going to turn this thing around. And I want to pay tribute to a really incredible man, a man who was a tremendous politician, and actually the fact that he was Catholic was, it probably did him in, right? It probably, nobody knows for sure, but uh, he was a great guy, Al Smith, great guy, everyone says it, happy warrior. I've said before that I'll say it again, I'll say it again as many times as I have to, directly to the mayor and the governor, if I have the honor to be elected, Next month, we're going to see what happens. It's happening so fast, but if I have the honor, I look forward to working together to make this city greater than ever before. We're going to do that. We're going to be, we're going to be focused on our work with the governor. I'll work with the mayor, Democrats. I will work with them. I work with whoever I have to, and we will even work very hard to bring back the SALT tax deduction. We're going to bring it back. We're going to bring it back. We're going to get that thing going, Chuck, okay? I actually... <laughs> thought about not doing <laughs> jokes tonight. I was going to come out here and say, listen, our country is doing very badly. This is not about jokes. And then some person said, you have to do jokes. I said, I don't want to. There's nothing funny about what's happening to our country. And I actually meant that I was going to do that. But they convinced me to say some of the things I said tonight. I don't know if they were funny or not, but uh, hey, you think good. this is easy standing up here and doing this? <laughs> in front of half a room that hates my guts and the other <laughs> half loves me. Half of us love me. I, well, maybe it's, uh, I think, 75% love me. Mm. But I actually do. I, I did think about that. And our country is uh, doing very badly with respect to its open borders and inflation, crushing things happening in the Middle East and Ukraine, it's so sad to see what's happening in Ukraine. Wow. I had a lot of people from, very religious people come up to me tonight from Ukraine and they're asking me for help. So, so sad to see so many people have been killed in Ukraine and we're going to get it, we're going to get it settled up if we win. As I'm president-elect, I'm going to get that done. I'm going to do it before we ever get back. We have to get it stopped. 
Too much killing. It's killing, and all of those cities are coming crashing down. Those beautiful golden domes are crashing down on their sides. They're so sad to see. The whole thing is so sad. So we're going to be for all those people. There's so many people came up to the dais, and uh, religious people from Ukraine. And I'm going to say, and I told them, don't worry, we're going to get it stopped. It's too bad it ever started. It should have never started. It wouldn't have started. But. Uh, we're going to have our country respected again. We're going to make sure that it's respected, and we're going to go out and do very good things for ourselves as a country and for the world. These are challenging times for our beautiful USA, but I'm committed to working with every partner here in New York and all across the nation to build an America that once again is strong and safe and proud and prosperous and free. We're going to make sure. Together, we can create a future defined by great ambitions and grand achievements that once again inspires the dreams of our children, brings back the American dream. You don't hear about the American dream anymore. We're going to make it possible for them to have the American dream. This is a very religious evening to me. It really is. It represents so much. My, my sister was uh, somebody that loved the church and gave to the church. The Cardinal knew that. I had a certain priest that she thought was incredible, right? A certain very, very fine man that she thought was incredible. Having uh, recently, myself, survived two assassination attempts, they survived. Uh, I have a chart that went down to the right. Fortunately, I looked at it. It's my all-time favorite piece of paper. But it went down, and I looked to the right, and I said, you know, was that luck? What was that, luck, or was that God that did that? And I think it was God that did that. I do. I do. But I have a very fresh, Cardinal, I have a very fresh appreciation for how blessed we are by God's providence and His divine mercy. I mean, that was something I was not supposed to be here tonight. That I can tell you. So with God's help, I know there is uh, nothing that cannot be achieved. We can achieve so much good with this country and get together and unify. I want to thank the Al Smith Foundation for its noble work, and I want to express my tremendous gratitude to the Catholic community. It's a great community. It's a community I've gotten along with all my life. I tell you, when I was when I was president, I was in the Oval Office, and I got a call from the Cardinal, and he said, "We need help." It was during the China virus. I want to be accurate. The China virus. <laughs> And he said, we need so help. Funny. Our schools are in devastating shape. They needed much more than a billion. I won't even tell you the number, but much more than a billion dollars. But I've known the community, and I've known the, the schools. I, knew, I know so many people that were educated in the Catholic school system. And they are great, and they just speak with it, like, with love, much more so than almost any system that I've seen. And he said, sir, we have uh, a big problem. We need a number of billions of dollars, or we're going to have to close down the New York school system, the whole system in New York. And I said, give me 15 minutes. I think I can find it. And we gave him billions of dollars. And you know what? He stayed open, and they thrived. And to this day, I hear you did just about the best job there is in education. So, and that was always an honor. That was always. And every time he sees me, he says, thank you very much. I said, I know what you're talking about, but we worked together. We were a good partnership, right? We got that money in about 15 minutes, billions, and uh, it was put to very good use. But I just want to thank everybody. This is a special evening. It's a very serious evening, I think. We have some serious problems in the world, but they're going to get solved, and we're going to make America great again. And thank you very much, and God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. I thought it was good. There's a few moments in there that were funny. I I enjoyed it. That that was that was good. I hope y'all enjoyed that as well. Uh man. I I don't know how people dislike him. He's funny. He's quick on his feet. He says what's on his mind. He doesn't sound like a regular politician, even when he's stumping. I think that's, I mean, look, 
Like I said at the beginning, guys, you need to get out there, do your research, vote on your convictions and your moral standards. And I think that's where uh, America has gotten away from. You need moral values. So I don't know what's happened. Well, a lot has happened. Uh, the feminazis, women's lib, the feminazis, that's another Rush Limbaugh term. I thought it was hilarious. Anyway, the feminazis. <laughs> oh, man. Political humor is funny. Uh, let's go grow a spine, people. Grow a spine. For Pete's sake, it's funny. But um, you got to get out there. You just can't sit. You just can't sit on your butt. You need to get out there. You need to do your research. You need to pray about it. Go research it. Go read Romans. Go research. What are you supposed to do as a Christian? What is your obligated duty? Family, God, country. Because you can overdo God. And God knows that. You have responsibilities. You have responsibility to your family. You have a responsibility to worshiping God. And you have a responsibility to your country. Because if you overdo worshiping, then you've neglected your family. You There's a balance there's a balance. Find it. Find the balance. Go pray about it. And again, there's no perfect human being on the planet. But you have to find what, what is your conviction? What are your moral values? What do you want your grandchildren, your children to prosper in? Is it a woke America? Is that what you want? Ripping apart these children? Feeding them these hormone blockers? And now they could never reproduce, so they're not going to give you a grandchild. Think about that. The implications of this stupidness, the twilight zone going on. Now, I'm going to wrap this up because this has gone long. So get out there and get off your butt. Pray, research, read. Period. God, family, country. We don't want to live with a bunch of pagans because guess what? What happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? Boom. Boom. There you go. Have a blessed weekend. And be safe out there.